Howdy everyone, it's your buddy BP. It is August 5th, 2016, Friday morning, which means that it is Zor Day. And before I begin, I just want to mention that I am uh, interested in doing more Destiny content. I've mostly just been doing these Arms Day videos and these Zor videos, but I like to do more content. But if I am going to do it, I like to do it with uh, subscribers. And I know some of y'all have been wanting to play with me. So if you're interested in playing some uh, Destiny with me, maybe you want to do some PvP, maybe you want to do PvE, you would want to do like Prison of Elders, or maybe a raid, just let me know in the comments section. And you all know my uh, PlayStation name, it's Bob Plays on PS, it's right up there in the corner, the uh, top right corner right there. So you can just send me a message on PSN, or you can just leave a comment in the comment section, I'll, get a, I'll try to put together a little list of all the uh, folks who want to play with me so if you want to play with me and you don't mind being in a video let me know and this, and the same goes for smite too i'm interested in playing with y'all in smite so yeah just let me know if you're uh, interested in playing but enough about that let's go find zor and see what he has for us on this which is week 100 of destiny and here he is right outside where the speaker is near this balcony all right zor what do you have for us this weekend There is something inside me that wishes to connect. Titans this week will get the no backup plans, which oddly enough is the same exotic that I'm wearing right now. I think he sold this a couple weeks ago, so if you missed out on that, uh, this is your chance to get it again. It has a discipline and strength build, which I like, because it mostly emphasizes on strength, and that's what you're going to want for, uh, for this exotic armor. So that's a really good roll right off the bat. It comes with Rain Blows, Momentum Transfer, Machine Gun Loader, and Shotgun Loader. Its exotic perk is Force Multiplier. <laughs> Multiplier. Let's try that again. It's Force Multiplier. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Shotgun Kills, Trigger Force Barrier, and Force Barrier's duration is increased. This was kind of overlooked in uh, Year 1. Because it didn't have much to it but they've uh, changed the exotic perk so now shotgun kills can activate force barrier and that alone makes all the difference force barrier is actually a really good defender ability it's nice to have that little overshield to help uh, keep you alive longer and it combos with all shotguns and it's especially good with the universal remote so I mean if you just want I mean you can crank this thing all the way up to uh, as far as your strength all the way up to 300 so and if you combo this with, I can't remember what the ability is called for defenders that increases the uh, duration for force barrier even further. It, uh, with this and that, you can have it last for up to 25 seconds, which just so happens to be how long it takes for you to cool down the next uh, force barrier if you have max strength. So if you go for a max strength build, this is, uh, this is definitely what you want. This thing is great, and it looks so awesome. It has all these glowy kind of... Uh, purplish uh, panels on it, sort of bluish purple. Very, very nice. It goes well with the chroma armor, too, if you don't mind me showing it all off. Check that out. It's really cool. I kind of hope they bring back the, um, the Vault of Glass raid so I can get that special type mark that glows, the one that kind of looks sort of bluish. That would just uh, go well with the look. It would just complete it, wouldn't it? It just looks so badass. But yeah, I really like the no backup plants. They're one of my favorite exotic armors. I almost never take these off, at least for, uh, for PvE. For PvP, I might consider something like an armamentarium. But if you're going for a shotgun type build, especially with a universal remote in PvP, then this is an excellent choice. This thing has saved my ass a few times. And the roll is fantastic. So yeah, I would strongly recommend picking these up. Hunters this week will get the Graviton Forfeit. It has an intellect and strength build, which is really good for this. It also has inverse shadow. Heavy Lifting and Invigoration. This exotic perk, Elusive Shadow, unlocks the Night Stalker subclass node Shade Step for free, which gives you an evade when you double tap the circle button or whichever it is on Xbox. I think it's the B. Uh, feel free to correct me if it's not the B button. But you all know Shade Step. It's very, very nice. It's really fun to use. It's good for getting out of a tight situation. And this just gives it to you for free, so you have a little bit more uh, breathing room in that final uh, subclass node. Very fun, very useful, and it looks cool. It's this helmet with all these sort of, you know, magenta sort of fumes or flames coming out of the front panel. 
It's really badass, and Shade Step is such a great ability. It's more useful in PvP than it is in PvE, I would say. Uh, it's definitely good at sort of like, uh, kind of evading someone coming at you with like a shotgun or something like that, and then kind of catching them by surprise. Very fun to use, very nice. Of course, it only works with the Night Stalker subclass, so if you're if you prefer your Gunslinger or your Blade Dancer, then you're not going to get a lot of mileage out of this. But for those of you who like uh, Night Stalker, this is a must-have. And the roll on it's pretty good too. So yes, I would definitely recommend this helmet. Warlocks this week will get the Apotheosis Veil, or is it the Apotheosis Veil? Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. It has an Intellect and Strength build, which is not bad. It includes Inverse Shadow, Second Thoughts, and Innervation. This exotic perk has private reserves. Immediately regenerate health, melee, and grenade upon activating your super, which is kind of like what uh, the uh, Ward of Dawn on Defender does now. It kind of gives you both your other abilities back. It's kind of cool. Uh, back in year one, all it did was just uh, regenerate health, and that was a real snooze. It didn't do much. And... Even now in year two with those uh, extra abilities and being able to get both your grenade and melee back is pretty nice. But compared to other um, other exotic armors that are available for the Warlock, this one is a bit underwhelming. You may prefer something like Claws of Ahamkar. You may prefer Obsidian Mind. You may prefer uh, almost anything else. <laughs> uh, it's not bad with the upgraded exotic ability but it still makes it kind of underwhelming. It's nice in the sense that you can use it for all subclasses, and that's really, really good, but that's about the only thing I could recommend about it. If you're a collector and you have the coins to spare, then yeah, go ahead and pick it up. Uh, otherwise, I would say this is not really necessary. We get a weapon this week instead of an engram. They've just been handing out the um, weapons instead of the engrams. It's kind of lame. I've been hoping for a uh, special weapon engram, but... Oh well, I guess we'll have to wait for that. But the weapon this week is the Zalo Supercell Auto Rifle. Very, very nice. It deals arc damage, which is unique for a year two weapon. There used to be uh, weapons that deal, uh, or rather primary weapons that dealt elemental damage back in year one. You can get them in raids and stuff, but they kind of did away with that. So right now, if you want an elemental primary weapon, the Zalo Supercell is about as good as it gets. It does take up an exotic slot, though. Its perks include CQB Ballistics, Smart Drift Control, and Aggressive Ballistics. It also has Persistence, Hammer Forged, Rifle Barrel, and Brace Frame. And get this, it actually has two exotic perks. First, Zalo Supercell. Arc Projectiles have the chance to chain lightning when enemies are close together. That one's unlocked right at the start. The other is bolts from the blue. Double kills with this weapon charge a small amount of super energy and return ammo to the magazine. So this thing is kind of like a mini bad juju in that sense. Uh, if I had to go with one or the other, I would prefer the bad juju. I think it's just more consistent. Uh, it does more damage. It's much more fun to uh, use. And I think it gives you more super energy than this. However... Unlike the Bad Juju, this does arc damage, and that is pretty sweet. So if you're looking for something that you can use um, with anything that has arc burn on, maybe it's on a Prison of Elders thing, or maybe it's just for a, for a strike or whatever, then it doesn't get much better than this. Oh, and if you got arc burn and a primary specialist, then oh yeah, this is excellent. This is a very wonderful... Uh, very wonderful weapon. It's got some nice perks, too. Um, you get your brace frame for the extra stability, or you can go with either hammer forge or rifle barrel for the range. Uh, pretty sweet. It's not a bad weapon. It's not as exciting as I hoped it would be, but if you're looking for a primary weapon that deals elemental damage in year two, there's really no better option than this. In fact, there's pretty much no other option than this. So, yeah, definitely pick this one up if you don't already have it. Legacy Engram for the week is primary weapon, so if you haven't gotten your thorn, this could be your chance to get it. And they are bringing the thorn back in uh, year three. In fact, I think they're bringing all the old uh, exotic weapons back. I think they're bringing Icebringer and Pocket Infinity and Yallerhorn and all of those back. 
So if you haven't gotten your Thorn yet, this might be a good chance to get one. Of course, I believe when Year 3 comes out, they're going to change it, so now you got to get your Year 3 Thorn through a quest. So you're not going to be able to do it that way, but if you don't have one yet and you want to get, get a feel for it and see how it works, this could be your chance to go ahead and get one. They're 31 Strange Coins apiece. We also have our Heavy Ammo Synths. So you get a pack of three for one Strange Coin. You get your three of coins. You get a pack of five for seven Strange Coins. And your Glass Needles. A pack of three for three Strange Coins, three Motes, and one Exotic Shard. What's the problem? And that just about does it for this video. Don't forget to uh, leave me a comment in the comment section or send me a, a message on PSN if you're interested in playing uh, Destiny with me. Uh, I know I haven't been doing a lot of Destiny content yet, and I do want to do some more, but if I am going to do Destiny content, I would rather do it with subscribers, because it's just no fun playing by myself. So if you want to play with me, let me know. Don't be shy. Uh, I'm perfectly uh, willing to play with folks of all types of uh, skill sets. I don't mind. I just have fun when I'm playing with subs. Well, if you like the video, then spank that like button. Also, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section if you have any feedback for me. I love hearing back from you, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. And as always, y'all be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.